Hey guys, what is up? And today we are going to be looking at breaking boxes with SQL injection. Um, so if you don't know what that is or how you can pop a box with it or just want to learn a bit more, then stick around. Today's video is sponsored by PIA, a fantastic, inexpensive VPN provider. If you don't like being tracked, don't want your personal information being handed over to an attacker, only have public Wi-Fi available, or just want some privacy, then a VPN is the perfect solution for you. PIA works on Mac, Windows, Linux, iOS, and Android, so you can be private and secure everywhere you go. Give it a try today using the link in the description below. Now let's dive into the ways we can have all sorts of fun using SQL. So SQL injection comes from not properly sanitizing data. When we say SQL injection, what we mean is that we're actually exploiting a vulnerability in the web application itself or the application itself in order to directly inject SQL commands into the database. Obviously this only works if you have an SQL database on the back end, and it can work with anything. It can work with MySQL, Postgre, um, it can work with uh, Oracle, you know, you name it, it'll work. As long as it's not properly sanitized, it can work. Modern implementations should definitely be using prepared statements, but ultimately some don't. And that's kind of where this ex exploit comes in. That's where we're actually able to attack from in order to get these SQL injections going. So in today's video, we have a deliberately vulnerable VM. Um, so this VM didn't have a write-up, so I had to kind of poke it myself. I really hope you appreciate the effort I had to go through to do this, because, uh, yeah. So right now, what we're looking at is this deliberately vulnerable VM. This is actually a VM that's uh, set up to be vulnerable in a few different areas, and SQL injection is one of them. So the first thing that I looked at as soon as I saw this was, oh, hey, look, there's, you know, my account, there's login and logout here. So what do we, what happens if we, for example, you know, put this in and then we'll just say test just out of curiosity. So it looks like that we have a MySQL syntax error. Um, so this is the first step to uh, detecting a SQL injection vulnerability. So now that I know for a fact that we actually have um, SQL injection and that the uh, server is MariaDB, what we're doing is we're going to go ahead and exploit this. Now, let me explain what I just did because it's a little bit confusing. So normally when you type in an email, you're gonna say like test at test.com. This one had some validation with it, so I just kind of went with it, but uh, sometimes you can get around that. Um, this one happened to be client side validation. So we have an email test at test.com, we have a password, and you know, we log in, we have an invalid username. So that's what normally happens. But when we think about an SQL statement, normally when we see it, it's something like an insert query where we have insert into uh, table you know, users or select from table users where yada, 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 right? So we have, um, for example, we have an, a username and a password. So we'll say select ID comma password from table users where email equals the email. And so that's generally pretty good. And with sanitization, that's actually a perfect logical thing to do. Without sanitization though, what ends up happening is you have select ID password from table users where email equals blank. And then this just denotes a comment. So we say email equals blank, and then the rest of it is completely commented out. This is obviously going to throw an error because we didn't actually finish the clause, but I just wanted to test to see if it actually worked and if it threw an error or what kind of error it would have thrown. And so since it threw this kind of error, we know for a fact that this is vulnerable. So now how do we actually use this vulnerability and make something out of it? How do we enumerate the backend database? How do we, you know, uh, decrypt passwords, whatever have you? So we're gonna go ahead and take a look at that right now. So I have a prepared command here for SQL map. Now this is a program, SQL map is a program that allows us to essentially map out the entire database and yes, decrypt passwords, whatever have you. So what we're doing is we're actually using this program called SQL map and we are giving it a uh, URL. In this case, it's 172.16.0.9 slash login.php. And that is actually what we have here, uh, 09 slash login.php. So what we're doing is we are um, going into the login.php and we're sending data, uh, user mail equals test uh, at test.com and password equals test. I got this just by taking a look at the uh, the headers that were sent when I took a look at this form. So I just inspected the form in Chrome. I looked at the username and password values and I just copied and pasted those here. And that's what I got. So we have the user mail equals test at test.com and password equals test. And the injectable parameter that we're looking for dash P here is user mail. 
So we're going to have a SQL map actually test this parameter for us and get all sorts of information on the back end. So uh, SQL map got a 302 redirect. Do you want to follow? Yes, we do. Um, redirect is a result of a post request. Do you want to resend the original post data to a new location? In this case, yeah, sure, why not? And it looks like that uh, username, user mail might be injectable and vulnerable to cross-site scripting, but we uh, don't care about this for now. Uh, what we care about is the fact that it is injectable here. Um, it looks like it is a MySQL or MariaDB implementation. So we're going to go ahead and just skip the payloads for other ones. And yes, we do. We're just going to basically use the defaults for all of this. So as you can see, SQL map is taking a look at a whole bunch of different fun stuff for us and just building a, uh, a case, a, a, essentially a case file in our, um, in our local data folders here uh, for this particular address. So that way when it goes through and does all these new attacks, it has some information to go on uh, from this uh, initial run. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and again, hit the default here. And it's just uh, introducing a random integer instead of null, and that's fine. So again, just basically doing a bunch of, and no, I don't want to uh, keep testing other parameters. So again, basically just doing a whole bunch of different tests and asking questions based on, uh, on what we want. Usually, again, in this case, we're going to do the defaults. Usually you want defaults. So we're going to use this information and we're going to make a new query in order to get more information from the database. So this query is very similar from the last one. We're still using the injectable parameter user, user mail, but in this case, we're actually going to list the databases. This parameter here allows us to list the databases for this particular uh, vulnerability. So we'll be able to see here. Again, we're just going to uh, follow redirects, all that. And it looks like we have an information schema, MySQL performance schema, and Seattle. So I'm going to guess that Seattle is the actual website. So what we're going to do is we're going to list the tables in the Seattle database. The way we do that is by doing this. Again, same parameters, same everything, but we're doing database Seattle, and then we're just going to list the tables based off that. Again, follow redirects, new location, yada, yada. So we have three tables. We have table blogs, table members, and table products. Um, what I'm gonna say is that we probably want table members, just judging by what we're looking at here. Uh, my ultimate goal here is to essentially get in or get admin access to this, to this website. So I probably want table members, which has an admin username and password in it, probably. So we're just going to go ahead and use the database Seattle, the table table members, and we're going to dump the results. So it looks like in this case, we actually have a couple of different uh, emails and, and passwords here. Uh, in this particular instance, the passwords haven't been encrypted or hashed in any sort of way, which they definitely should have been, but hey, what can you do? And there we have our usernames and whether or not they are an admin right here and whether or not they have blog access. So for example, if I wanted to log in as the admin, I would do admin at seattlegrounds.net with the password assassin1, and I should, in theory, be able to get access to this website. However, I do want to do one last thing before I go ahead and escape out of this SQL injection here and we are going to list the passwords for the actual database itself. Now, what this means is um, the database itself has usernames and passwords in it that we can grab, we can try and get the passwords for, um, for the actual database itself. Not for the website, but for the database. So again, we're going to go ahead and follow and go for the post requests. And I do not want to process because what I want to do is I want to uh, do a dictionary attack uh, against these passwords that we have here. We have root with a bunch of roots with a bunch of different passwords, and I want to try and dictionary attack them uh, using just the default dictionary file for just this, uh, this SQL map program. We can use other dictionary files if we want, but hey, and we're not even going to do uh, suffixes. So we're going to take a look here, and we're going to see that it is actually going very quickly because this is a very weak hash. But we do have a password for the user root uh, called password with an uppercase everything basically. So now we have a root username and password uh, for the root user of the MySQL database. That's root and password with all capitals. So if we wanted to, we now have root access to the database itself and we can use this to get a shell into the system. And we can use this to basically play with the database in pretty much any way that we want. But what I want to do for now, just for now, 
is I want to test these credentials here. We're going to go ahead and copy this. And we're going to say, okay, admin at seattlesounds.net. And the password is assassin1. Control V, there we go. And look at that, we are now admin. We can log out, we can post a new blog with a new title, we can update accounts and view logs. So hopefully we can uh, now control the entire website. And again, now that we have that MySQL root database username and password, we can actually control the database itself and we can use SQL map to get a reverse shell from the database if specific things are done. So if, if uh, for example, it has local file inclusion into the database, things like that, we can read files and we can actually get access to the server itself using a reverse shell. So you may be thinking, oh, this is just an outdated problem. You know, we have these servers from 2002 or whatever else, and everybody used to use this, and it used to be vulnerable, this used to be a thing, you know, used to, used to, used to. It doesn't anymore, is what you're saying. So a lot of people will say, you know, this doesn't exist anymore, basically. This is not a, th a problem that exists in the modern world. And to that I say, think again. So as some of you may know, I write plugins for Bucket, which is a type of server for Minecraft. So you have Minecraft, you have uh, people who want to run servers for Minecraft, and a plugin is just a bit of software that you can add on to your server to make it more unique or to add special functionality to it. So occasionally I do write plugins for Bucket, um, which is a type of server for that. So I went ahead and searched for the phrases database and GitHub on spigotmc.org, which is a giant repository of these plugins. I sorted by the most recent, and this was the first link. This plugin, as you can see, was actually updated earlier today. This is a, two hours ago was the la last commit. And this is a fairly popular plugin. It's called MCMMO Horses. And so if we take a look inside the source.com horse RPG, and we just take a look at, mm, let's say the horse RPG.java here, we're going to find a giant file full of many, many lines of code, far too many lines of code. But if we take a look at an insert into query, we have insert into horses values. So this is an SQL query that says, okay, insert, um, insert whatever I want into the table horses. And the values that we're inserting is h.name, h.owners, h.color, yada, yada. The thing we wanna pay attention to here is this SQL injection. We have an insert into horses and then values h.name. h.name is a controllable parameter. If I named my horse, drop tables horses, I would be able to drop this table. So I would be able to inject any sort of SQL that I wanted into this plugin just by naming my horse specific things. Now, if you're thinking that this is an issue, I did too. So I went ahead and made an issue on, on the GitHub here with the uh, statement. I gave examples and documentation on prepared statements and I made a pull request that actually fixes this issue itself. So as you can see here, we have the changes that I made to the actual file. Essentially, well, this was done by my IDE, so that was my bad, my apologies. However, this stuff here was uh, changed to be, you know, a try with resources. This was changed, this was changed. But more importantly, we have a prepared statement. Uh, so instead of the statement.execute update with the SQL injection vulnerability, we now have a prepared statement that says insert into horses and all of these question marks, which are a lot, but I didn't focus on that. I was just focused on prepare, or preparing the statement and actually preventing the SQL injection. So now we have a prepared statement in which we are setting a bunch of strings and integers and then running this bat, uh, batch execute. So this should insert a bunch of horses into the horses table while using prepared statements. So you have the name, the owner's name, everything is prepared. So you can't use an SQL injection vulnerability on this plugin. So the lesson here is that if you can verify the things you install, I know that's not something that you can do every time. You can't always go through every bit of source code and nobody's perfect. I understand that. But if you can, try and just take a cursory look at the things that you install because all I had to do here was literally search for the phrase insert in, in this plugin in the GitHub search feature or prepared statement or just statement or anything. And I just found the first result and this was it. 
So put a little bit of care into the plugins that you install because this is a popular plugin. Take a little care into the things that you install and use. Always keep on top of updates. When you run outdated software, you run the risk of having vulnerabilities like this or even worse, uh, remote code execution, anything can happen. When updates come along, sometimes they'll fix something like this. So this will be a future, I hope, will be a future update for this plugin. Anybody that is not using this update will have a vulnerable version of this plugin that people can inject SQL into. That is not good. When they update, or when you update, that means you're hopefully patching a lot of these vulnerabilities and exploits that people would otherwise use in order to gain access to your system. And finally, if you're a developer, use prepared statements. Don't be stuck in 2001. Like, we have fixed this. This is something that is fixable. This is something we can do. This is not a modern problem, but it is still a modern issue. So when you're developing something, when you're creating something, use prepared statements. PHP has it, Java has it, C++ has it, everybody has it by now. There is no language that you can write SQL in that you can't do a prepared statement in. So if you can, do that. So that's it for today's video. I hope you liked the lesson on SQL injection and I hope you appreciated seeing a practical example on actually injecting SQL into a live service and taking a look at something that was modern and still had this issue. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. If I see more of that, of course I will do more of this. And as always, I'll see you next time.